Hello friends, today we are going to discuss about Mozo's ergography. Okay, it's a very important topic in the subject physiology. It is related to nerve muscle physiology practical. Okay, in the for, for the first year MBBS students. So first we'll discuss what are the instruments required. Okay, we require Mozo's ergograph. So this instrument it is known as Mozo's ergograph. We'll discuss the parts of this. Then we require a sphygmomanometer. It is the blood pressure measuring device and a timer or there is even something known as metronome if it's not available you can use this timer and the weights okay so let us discuss the parts of the instrument so you can see uh, this mozo's ergograph it consists of this clamps for keeping the forearm okay forearm and this uh, metallic cylinders to uh, or the finger holders to for keeping the index finger and the ring finger then there is a string or a rope attached here and the other end of the rope is passed over a pulley over which you can see the weight is put okay we have put totally 2 kg okay up to the strength of the subject we can put it and we have to adjust the clamp so that the forearm should be fixed here but the clamp should not be too much tightened so that it may uh, block or it can the blood vessels okay it should be just tight enough so that it the forearm should be kept in the place so it is the position you have to keep it you can even adjust this finger holders the screws provided this okay now on the other end there is a recording device this is a movable uh, you can see this one plate movable plate and uh, there is a we have put a pen or a writing pencil you whichever so it this movable slide will be sliding as the person is lifting the weight okay the point will be more clear once we start the procedure so let us start the procedure and first record some normal findings okay on the other hand a chymograph can also be put okay so first thing is uh, we have to give the instructions to the subject we have already given the instruction to the subject that the subject should contract the this uh, middle finger muscles of the middle finger with the help of the this string so they have to contract at a frequency of one per second that is in 60 seconds 60 times you can uh, keep the frequency up to your wish you can keep it uh, two per uh, sorry two uh, one contractions per two second that is in uh, one minute that will be 30 contractions okay we have now we are taking one minute 60 contractions one per second and we will start the timer we have already given one uh, uh, clock to or our subject they he is watching that and every min second he will be doing one contraction okay so let us start it once i say start our subject will start contracting the muscles okay so we will start the procedure start you can see as the person is contracting see this writing lever is we can see the right uh, this linings this is known as ergogram what is ergogram it is a graphical record of the contraction hum, contractions of the human voluntary muscles okay and the procedure is known as ergography and the instrument is known as ergograph it was first developed or described by mozo that's why it is known as mozo ergograph so the weight is getting lifted here okay and simultaneously we are recording it right so until what time we should record until the person becomes fatigued that is not able to lift the weight okay they should maintain the frequency every one second one contractions and simultaneously we have to even see the total duration for how much duration the person is able to do it okay now it's almost uh, 55 seconds the person is still doing it so we have kept it so as long as the person can do it we should see if the person is not able to lift the weight then we have to stop now the person has stopped it it was one minute five seconds okay that's what we have to record then we have to uh, remove this pen okay and we have to remove this uh, recordings okay and i'll show you how what are the recordings now you can see this we are removing this so this is the graph what we got okay this is the graph of the normal recording okay this is how you get the graph okay we i'll show you how the calculations to be done okay then again you need to place this papers here on this moving sliding paper okay just leave the pen here and you have to keep this moving sliding paper here like this you have to keep it okay then after that once you keep it then adjust this sliding uh, bar at one end and correct this pen 
okay with the same weight now we have to wait for another 15 minutes so that the person should relax okay and again you need to repeat the procedure so if you repeat you will get a similar graph with the similar duration so what does it indicate that fatigue is a reversible phenomena okay now we will do one more procedure that is fatigue is a uh, like effect of fatigue on venous occlusion okay we have already recorded this normal graph then we'll see uh, the venous occlusion okay so again the same procedure only thing is we need to occlude the veins here okay so we have to use this pigmo manometer with the help of this uh, cuff of the pigmo manometer you have to tie this pigmo manometer here on the arm same like how you measure the blood pressure okay same like how you measure the blood pressure so when you tie uh, you have to tie these things with the same precautions okay so for the precaution how to tie the cuff and all please uh, refer our video on blood pressure okay we will be uploading that shortly then once you place this place this you have to raise the pressure you have to raise the pressure in this mercury manometer you have to raise the pressure in this mercury manometer up to 40 millimeter of mercury up to 40 millimeter of mercury you have to just raise it okay so that 40 millimeter of manometer so that the veins should get occluded okay so just tie this knob and now see there is increase here so I, you can keep up to 40 or 50 millimeter okay and keep it now the pressure is here 40 millimeter now the person has to do the same procedure with the venous, venous occlusion and we'll start once we start same instructions we have to give okay same instructions we have to give and person will do it okay the this hand should be straight so start wait a second wait a second now start so see same procedure the person is doing now only difference is we are occluding the veins here more specifically the brachial veins here with a 40 millimeter pressure there okay with a 40 millimeter pressure there so they should not stop in between if they stop then again it will be a problem so whatever the strength when the muscles get fatty the contractions whatever we record we have to take that okay this is the effect of venous occlusion on the phenomenon of fatigue okay we have to see the duration also earlier we have seen it was one minute some seconds now it is we will see the duration is also reduced and also the total capacity is also reduced okay now the person has stopped so immediately you need to deflate this cuff okay to deflate it and bring the pressure to zero okay and you should remove the cuff okay and the person should relax now i'll show you what recordings we got here so it was less it was just on 44 or 45 seconds the duration we have to see so duration is also reduced earlier it was more than one minute one minute six seconds now it is just 45 seconds now this is the normal graph what you get earlier now this is with the venous occlusion can you see the difference you can see the height of contraction is reduced and even the duration is reduced so the even the work done by the muscles is reduced when we have occluded the veins okay now we'll do the third procedure effect of arterial occlusion okay so we'll keep these two recordings and we will do effect of arterial pressure the procedure is same the only difference is we have to see uh, occlude the arteries now to occlude the arteries we have to raise the pressure above the systolic blood pressure ideally you should record the blood pressure and raise this pigma manometer cuff above the 160 millimeter mercury okay but before that you should give an adequate rest we have already given an adequate rest to him minimum 10 to 15 minutes then the same thing the person should be ready okay first keep everything ready same thing keep thing ready and with the help of this pigmo manometer raise the blood pressure above 160 uh, depending upon systolic pressure up to 200 also you can keep it depending on the systolic blood pressure but roughly a normal person will have around 120 millimeter of mercury systolic blood pressure uh, raises so you can keep up to 160 okay so i'm just raising this you can see the mercury column here okay so I am keeping up to okay, 160 or 170 I will keep. Hmm? You can keep up to 200 also but should not keep it for longer duration. Now when you have kept that then to start the procedure immediately. So you have to give the instructions, same instructions again and you have to start it immediately. Start. 
now you can see again the person is doing it again the person is doing it so we are getting the recordings now let's see the total duration now let's see the total duration and uh, also the effect of fatigue so every one second the person is contacting so we'll see the total duration and also the work done ultimately how much is this okay how much is this earlier we got 44 seconds so here the duration will be less than that only let's see it's already 30 seconds so 32 33 seconds so the person is not able to do it so we have to stop this so it was 36 seconds so immediately deflate this deflate this okay and remove the remove the blood pressure cuff okay because if you keep it for a longer duration after the arterial occlusion it may occlude the arteries and that can be very dangerous thing okay so now you can see these are the normal and venous occlusion graphs now what we got the arterial occlusion graph we have to see so this is the arterial occlusion graph can see the difference okay we we'll label it later arterial occlusion the work done is less than the venous occlusion also okay and this is the normal so we have to calculate now the work done in the normal then venous occlusion and arterial occlusion then we'll see the phenol that is the skeletal muscles will get fatigue earlier in case of arterial occlusion then earlier in the venous occlusion as compared to the normal okay now let us see the calculation part so this is the normal graph what we got this is the graph graph means ergogram okay so this was after the venous occlusion and similarly what we got here is arterial occlusion okay we got this graphs during the ergography ergography is the procedure and ergograph is the name of the instrument okay now uh, let us see we have to calculate the work done we have to calculate the work done Okay. So, you know the formula for the work done will be force into displacement, force is here the weight used. So, we used 2 kg that is 2000 grams okay. and displacement or the distance is actually we have to see the total height of this contraction, the suppose it is 3 centimeter, 3, 3, 3, 3 whatever, we have to count it until the last that is the total displacement or the distance covered. Okay. Now, it is practically difficult to calculate this. So, for this we have a formula, we have a formula that is we have to first find out the average height of the contraction, average height of the contraction into number of contractions, number of contractions. Okay. So, how we have to find out the average height of the contraction, again to find out the average height of the contraction there is a formula area of rectangle plus area of triangle triangle divided by total length of baseline okay into if as it is it has to be continued as into number of contractions so here what is this area of triangle area of the rectangle let us see and all will be in centimeters so again then we have to draw on this graph i'll just show this one normal one so we have to draw one rectangle here considering these markings like this this is one rectangle right and again we need to draw a triangle here this tapering end now you can see this is a rectangle the area of the rectangle will be length into breadth length into breadth okay the area of the rectangle here will be length into breadth okay then plus area of the triangle is half into base into height and divided by total length of the baseline again into number of contraction that will be total work done okay now length into breadth easily we can make out and again for this area of the triangle so it is this is the base this is the height so you have to see for example uh, let me show you how exactly to calculate so this is with the help of the centimeter scale here so see this is around 6.2 centimeter okay that is the length and breadth breadth is around 2 centimeter so, so 
6.2 into 2 centimeter. You have to substitute here 6.2 and here into 2, okay. And half into brace, breadth uh, base into height. So, this base is around 4 centimeter and again this height is around 2 centimeter. So, this you have to multiply and whatever you get and length of the baseline. So, baseline is this whole length, okay. This is around 10.5 centimeter. So, you have to check for this and substitute the values. So, whatever values you get, ultimately you get the work done in gram centimeter. Now, if you want to convert into ergs, so you have to just simply multiply by 981 that will give the work done in ergs, okay. So, ultimately you have to calculate what? Work done by the muscle. What we are using this voluntary uh, muscles. Okay. So, what is ergography? It is the uh, procedure of recording the voluntary contractions of the skeletal muscles here. So, what we are using this flexor of the middle finger. So, when we are flexing this, the, some work is done. So, ultimately the work done, we have to substitute here. So, there kind, there might be three questions can be kept in your practical examination of ergography, nerve muscle physiology. So, first is this one. So, you have to substitute the values in the tabular column. So, weight what we used was 2000 gram. If you have used uh, a lesser weight like 1500 gram, you have to substitute that. Then frequency we have kept it at 60 per minute. If you have taken 30 per minute, that is uh, 2 time means every 2 second you do one contraction that will be 30 per second. We have done every 1 second one contraction if you remember that is 60 per minute. Then duration also we have calculated 1 minute some seconds whatever you have to substitute the duration and the work done. So, this is suppose after the uh, muscle has been fatigued if we give a rest for 10 or 20 minutes, uh, 15 minutes again the person will be able to do the things. So, what does it indicate that fatigue is a temporary phenomena right it is a reversible thing then. Uh, what you have to make out is effect of venous occlusion again, effect of venous occlusion. So, same thing we have to do first normal recordings and again substitute the same values then finally, duration is what we see duration will be decreased here as compared to the normal and work done is also decreased here, okay. Here it will be same only almost similar, here the work done will be less. Then effect of arterial occlusion again you have to substitute the same values here. Again the duration is further reduced and work done will be further reduced here. When you calculate the work done in uh, venous occlusion, you can see here even the duration was reduced, this was venous occlusion, right. So, duration was reduced and you calculate the total work done by this formula, okay. We have already discussed this area of triangle, rectangle, whatever substitute this with number of contraction. Number of contraction means this number of lines you have to contact, uh, we have to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so and so whatever 10, 15, 30, whatever you get, you have to substitute here. Similarly, arterial occlusion, same thing you have to draw this and calculate the work done. So, ultimately the work done will be less here in the arterial occlusion as compared to the normal and uh, are as compared to the venous occlusion. This is how, what you need to do. Finally, some theory related uh, questions will be asked. So, questions like define fatigue, define fatigue, what are the causes of fatigue, uh, what is isometric exercise or isotonic exercise or the difference between that and anything related with the nerve muscle physiology can be asked, okay. So, this is all about the ergography. Stay tuned with us. Uh, and subscribe to our channel Doctor's Corner for all the lectures and the videos of the MBBS subjects. Thank you.